Hey y'all, my name is Ashley and welcome to Royal Dominion Authority Global Ministries where we walk by faith and not by sight, where we seek to add value to the lives of others the same way that God adds value to our lives on a daily. That is if we are welcoming the value of the Lord, we are welcoming his wisdom, his knowledge, his understanding, and that we are putting it in order where it needs to be. So you all, I just wanted to come and encourage somebody on today the same way that God had to encourage me, right? Just being transparent. Um, I don't want to be somebody who get on here and talk about God this, God that, God this, God that. But I neglect to be transparent, that I neglect to share testimony, that I neglect to share, you know, my rise and my fall, my ups and my downs, my lows and my highs. Because a lot of people, they like to highlight the real of the highs in their life right but not talk about the lows but y'all know me I'm always talking about the lows because I feel like it goes with the highs I feel like the lows helps us to you know prepare a way for those high time those 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 high moments right those good times but what about the bad times what about the times when we're depressed what about the times when we're angry what about the times we when we don't feel worthy what about the times when we don't know which way we're going what about the times when we just don't know how right what about the times when um, we're more fearful um um opposed to being brave opposed to being courageous and today you all i just have to do i just have to smile real quick because today um, in service, we had Youth Sunday, so we had the babies, like the the baby kids. They sung um, a few selections um, in the choir, and then they sung with our our actual praise team. And then our youth leaders came up and gave um, a word. Four of our youth leaders came up and gave a word, and they all really, really touched the depths of my soul. It's really everything that the youth leaders spoke on today is everything that God had been speaking to me in this season that I'm in of total surrender and if I could be honest you all I know I said it plenty times before but totally surrendering to God is not easy it's not easy I'm a believer and y'all know I'm radical for Christ I, I go hard for God but being honest like totally surrendering to God is not an easy thing to do so I don't ever want to just get up here on this platform and act like everything is all in well or like I tell you all that you can get through it because I honestly believe that because God is getting me through and God has I can just remember you know God allowed me to look back on today right and I can just remember as I look back you know not wanting to go back but just as I look back right God allowed me to remember and he reminded me of how far far he brought brought me. Like, I can come out of this. Like, when you're in a hard place, you feel like you're in a dry place. You feel like you're under a rock. You feel like, I know that God can do it, but can I do it? You know what I'm saying? Like, we have that faith in God that he can do it because we know that God is God, right? We know that he's all-powerful, all-knowing, right? And he hold the world in his hands. He hold every promise in his hands. Like when God speaks the thing, it has to come to pass. When God said, let there be light, there was light, right? And so a lot of times in our lives, God tells us to speak light in a dark place. He tells us to speak light. Allow the light of God, allow the love of God and allow the spirit of God to hover over our fear. To allow the light and the love and the spirit of God to hover over our anxiety, over our depression, over our worry, over our self-doubt, right? And it's like we think that we're doing it, but then when we step outside of ourselves and we're able to look and God is able to have us to be self-aware, we're seeing that there is more, right? Not coming on here saying that we don't do that. We don't speak you know, life into dead situations that we don't speak to our dry bones, which we do. But God is saying that there is more. Don't stop speaking. Don't stop believing. Don't stop going hard for God. Like if we look around and we really see 
everything that's going on in the world outside of our lives, if we just take a moment and not think of ourselves, just a moment, right? Because I had to repent um, last night. I, I, I truly cried out to God and repented to God and was just like, God, forgive me for being so selfish. Forgive me for thinking about myself, thinking about how you're going to make a way for me. Like, I feel, you know, I was just like, God, just forgive me, you know. But when we take a moment to step outside of ourselves and to actually look around of what's going on around us in the world, we can see the reason that we are going through it inwardly is because God is calling us to do more. There is more on the inside of us that God is telling us. He's actually putting us in position to do more. But we have to believe in our heart of hearts that we are worthy to do more that we are worthy of more, that we are worthy to be used even though we're just a wreck, even though we're still sinners, right? We are worthy of God to be used. We just have to be willing. And I say that because if you look around, it's so much. I don't watch TV, really. Like, I just started back watching TV, but I don't watch the news, which is sad because I do need to start watching the news. But I feel like everything that's going on in the news is always is already in the Word of God. But it's still good to be self-aware and it's still good to be aware of what's actually going on in the world so you can know what to pray about, so that you can know how to pray. And when I say how to pray, I'm not talking about an actual position on praying. I'm saying the words to pray, praying the heart of the Father, right? It's so much going on. It's so much wickedness going on. It's so much deception going on in the world. And God is saying He's causing this strong delusion in the world because these are people who are not seeking after him. These are people who are seeking after their own flesh. These are people who are seeking after what they love, right? Of the things of the things of their heart. See, we desire God and we desire the things of God, but the people that is of the world desire things of the world. And that is demonic wisdom. That's worldly wisdom. That is sensual wisdom. It's not wisdom of God. Like a lot of these different religions, people like to call Christianity a religion, but Christianity is not a religion. It is a way. It's a way. It's a relationship. It's a way to God by forming that relationship and believing by faith, right? It is a way. It is not a religion, but it is a way to a relationship to God. But if we look at these other different religions, Right. As far as like new age and these other religions that tells you that you can get to God by this way, you can get to God by this person, you can get to God by this thing, you can get to God by this religion, you can get to God. But it's there is only one way. Right. And let me pull up that scripture, because one of the youth leaders um, um, spoke about a scripture this morning and it really hit me in the face because at the end of the day right at the end of the day there is only one way to God and this scripture I had to write this scripture down because I was like you know what God that is so right and it really just hit my spirit just now and I really just believe that Holy Spirit wants to remind us all that there is only one way to God, right? So that way, that scripture is 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6. It says, yet for us, there is one God, the Father of whom are all things, and we for him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom are all things, and through whom we live. There is only one God and one Christ. Jesus. Jesus is the only way that you can get to God, period. Now, I can say, as someone who was living of the world, who was living in the world, but was of the world as well, before I actually rededicated my life back to God, I can say that there were so many ways that I tried to get to God by smoking, getting high, by drinking. I'm not going to say that I was fornicating to get to God, but these were the sins that I was committing while I was of the world, right? Thinking that I was searching out God. But I was really pleasing my flesh. I was only pleasing myself. 
I was only doing things to please and to appease man. I was only doing things to make me happy. I was not living in joy. I was not living in the everlasting way of life. I was living and I was walking down the road in the path to destruction. What is that scripture that says that wide is the path to destruction and narrow is the way? I was walking the wide path along with everybody else. I was walking the path where not too many people um, um, would come out from this path and say, you know what, I want to go the other way. I wasn't walking the narrow path. Like I knew God. I knew that I was a child of God. I knew that God had called me. At that point in time, I just now had, had said yes. So I was walking the road to destruction. And so a lot of these different religions, they will have your mind gone and have you thinking that they can get to, to, to God by that way. And what God is doing for a lot of people is he is stopping a lot of people on that particular road and blinding them so that they can see the greater light because a lot of things look as though is there as though it is a light and is really an um imitation of that great light is an imitation of god is not the real thing right and so what god is doing to a lot of us he's waking us up he's waking the sinners up he's waking the other nations of people up and allowing them to see the true light of god because guess what? All creation is waiting for us. We are the manifestation. We are the sons of God that will be that manifestation. And we will be the ones to see manifestation take place. But we first got to humble ourselves and submit. So it brings me to a point um, in this particular scripture. Psalms. 46 verses 10 and 11 it says be still and know that i am god i will be honored by every nation i will be honored throughout the world the lord of heaven's army is here among us the god of israel is our fortress god is saying that he's going to be honored there will be someone in the earth that will honor the lord god and if God have to blind us on the road to Damascus like he did Saul before his name was changed to Paul, God will blind us on that particular work road that we are walking on so that he will be honored, so that his name will be glorified, so that his name will be lifted high. He says that if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto thee. That means God is calling for us to lift up his name above all of those other names, above Muhammad, above Buddha, above Krishna, above confusion, right? Above all of those other names, new age in the things that they believe in and the things that they are practicing, all of this sorcery and this witchcraft and the, the, the doctrines of man, come on, the heresies, the false doctrines and the false gospel. There is only one gospel and that is written in the Holy Bible. And a lot of us, we have not yet had that encounter with God for us to confess that Christianity, that the Holy Word, the Holy Bible is the only gospel. Man may take what they want to out of the Bible and put their name on it but at the, and say that this is God. But at the end of the day, the only scripture that actually made it was the scripture of the Bible. And so we have to exalt the God of Israel. We have to exalt the God of the Holy Word, which is Yahweh, which is Jehovah, Jireh, which is God Almighty. Come on. Which is Jehovah Sitkanu, which is the Lord, my righteousness, because God is saying in this hour, he's calling for a generation who will be righteous unto him. A generation who's not going to compromise. A generation who's going to go all the way. A generation that even when they're faced with adversity and affliction, right? And oppression and um, trauma and diseases and affliction and all of these things, he, we still will not forsake him. Because why the Lord is our strong tower, the Lord is our fortress. The definition of fortress is a military stronghold 
especially a strongly fortified town fit for a large garrison. Second definition is a person or a thing that is not susceptible to outside influence or disturbance. See, the Lord is our fortress. The Lord is our strong tower. But Father God wants to make us fortresses of our cities, fortresses of our homes, fortresses of our excuse me, communities, fortresses of our careers, fortresses of our families, fortress, excuse me, of the ministry that we are birthing for the for the nations, for the world. How can I see? Hallelujah. God, because the Lord is our fortress, he wants to make us fortresses as well. A fortress over fear. That we will not allow fear to come in and torment us. That we will not allow anxiety to come in and torment us. That we will not allow disease and infirmities to come in and overwhelm us and overtake us. Because God, God may have it there as a thorn in our side to continue to, to for us to remain humble. Because if you remain humble, God will exalt you in due time. But you have to know the Lord your God. And you have to know that God is calling you higher. So therefore, you have to answer the call. Like today, God had to remind me of seven things. And I'm going to read these things out to you all. I put them on my um Facebook page. But I want to read. God reminded me of these seven things and more, but these were the things that I could think of off the top of my head, right? The number one thing, stay encouraged. Number two, take a look back to see how far you've come. Number three, do not give up. Number four, remain faithful to God. Number five, um, be reminded that the best days are ahead of you. Number six, Continue to allow God, I'm sorry, con number six, continue to love in spite of. Number seven, continue to allow God to do the work in your heart in order for you to get out of your head. And these are for my critical thinkers, number seven. I'm a critical thinker, so God had to remind me that the reason that you're not seeing certain things transpire or the reason that is it may be taking you a little longer than others is because you are an overthinker and you're overthinking things if you could just get out of your head and get in your heart and push out the things that is in your heart and not allow the things that is in your head to take over you then you will go forth and possess the land then you will go forth and get those people who I am calling those people who I'm connecting you with God is saying get out of your head and get in your heart allow me to do a, 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 a surgical work in your heart so that the things in your head does not overtake you okay don't give up stay encouraged take a look back and see don't go back but take a look back and see how far God has brought me so that you can know that Looking ahead is not so bad. See, we look with our natural eyes and we get sidetracked and overwhelmed by what we see in the natural, what God is saying. In the spiritual, I've already put you there. You're, you're already in that place. But in the natural, I need you to move. I need you to go. I need you to I need you to step. I need you to 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 make steps toward where I've already placed you and taken you in the in the spiritual, right? But don't be moved by what you see in the natural because God is working it all out. And I'm not just speaking that for you all. I'm speaking that to myself as well. Like, don't be moved by what you see. Don't allow your judgment to be clouded. Don't allow your judgment to put you in a place of stagnancy or um, procrastination or fear of moving like, because the last couple of months, I would say the last two months or the last month and a half, I've been operating out of a sense of fear that I, if I do a certain thing or if I 
because I already see myself in the spirit, right, succeeding. But what I see in the natural is failure. And God is saying, don't allow what you see in the natural stop you from succeeding. I've already called you a successor. I've already called you somebody who is above and not beneath. The lender and not the borrower, the head and not the tail. So be reminded on today, okay, to get, keep going. Like even in your brokenness, a lot of people saying that I don't want to, you know, brokenness ain't a part of me. That's a lie from the pits of hell. It is. But if I can be real, us as humans, we do get in, in times of brokenness. And that is only for God to build us back up, right? That is for God to, for us to continue to be humble. Because when you're in a state of brokenness, that means God is increasing your humility, right? So then when God builds you back up and make you whole again, you know not to step out of bounds. You know not to cross that line. You know to keep going even in the midst of your hard times. You know that if God brought me from this place, if God did it before, then he can surely do it again. But we have to have a surely in our heart. We have to have a confidence, a, a confidence and a confidence in knowing that even when we fall and get back up again, that we don't sit in a place of condemnation, that we don't sit in a place of shame, that we don't sit in a place of guilt, that we don't sit in a place, uh, uh, that low dry place, that desolate place, but we can speak to those dry bones and our dry bones can live again. We can speak to the winds and the four winds of the earth will do what we say. Because we spoke it with belief and we spoke it with divine authority and we spoke that thing knowing that we can do all things but fail because God can do all things but fail even if we do fail. Like we have to look to the heavens, to the hills which cometh our help and know that our help, it comes from the Lord. Listen, that is all that I wanted to share with you all. Also, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you to those who sown seed into this ministry. You're sowing on fertile ground. Your seed is taking root. And I prophesy right now, I declare and decree and I pray a blessing over your life a hundredfold. A hundredfold blessing that eyes have not seen, neither have ear heard. Everything that your heart desire, if it lines up with the will of God, that it shall prosper in the name of Jesus in due time. And I thank you for sowing seed into this ministry. Because God is doing a great work, not just in my life, but he's doing a great work in your life as well. You know, even if you're not able to sow a seed. Like, I thank you for your prayers. I thank you for your support by coming on, listening to the words, sharing the words, right? Like, because it's not all about giving money. It's not, you know, people only do that when they're led by the Spirit of God. But a lot of times we don't even have, have that to do. Like, a lot of times we want to sow seeds monetarily, but we don't have it monetarily. But God is saying even in that, though, even a seed of prayer, Right, a seed of peace and blessings, of a seed of love. Sow those seeds. Share the word with somebody who you think may need it. Continue to tap in. Continue to go deeper in the Lord God. Continue to get into his word. Continue to pray and worship the Lord God. Continue to trust God and be led by the Holy Spirit. Even at times when you're not sure. Just pray and say, God, <laughs> your will be done in my life, God. May your will be done in, your, in my life, God, and, and trust that God is leading you, regardless of what it looks like, okay? Because it's some pals in my life, God be telling me to walk down, and I'll be like, say what, huh, God, what, hmm, what, what? And as you go deeper in God, some things is going to look like it's not God. But that's why you have to have a deeper discernment, right, as you go deeper in a, a deeper prayer life and a deeper praise and emphatic 
heart of praise so that when you get to those places of uncertainty, you will know that even in your doubt and uncertainty, you'll know that you're still led by God. <coughs> and if God redirects you, take the redirection. Don't beat yourself up. Right? Listen, live, love, life. Laugh, have joy, be fruitful, multiply. You got a business? Pray over that business. We pray over that business right now in the name of Jesus. Not just increase in revenue, God, but we pray, God, clear vision, God. Clear vision, Father God, to steward, God, everything that you've placed in our hands, Father God. We give back to you, Father God, so that you may add the increase, God, of faith and favor and strength and might. Father God, the increase, God, in vision, Father God, the increase in discernment, the increase, God, in direction, God, the increase, Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, our family, God, increase, God, the love, God, that we have for one another, God, increase, Jesus, our wisdom, God, increase on our jobs, God, increase in our ministry, God, increase in our finances, God. Increase, God, in our wisdom in the word of God, in the word of God. Increase our love of God, Father God. Jesus, 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 have your way, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <coughs> if you're led to sow, a, to sow a seed, the information will be in the description box. Um, also... The book is still on sale. Urgency releasing right now. Prayers is urgency that we pray. It's urgency. Praying should be a mandate in your life. Praying should be essential in your life. Pray, 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 pray. We can never pray too much. So what if people talk about you? <laughs> so much. If, so what if people say, he always praying. She always praying. So what? I'm doing what God want me to do, right? Listen, I love you all. And again, thank you all to everyone that's been sowing seeds into this ministry. Seeds of prayer, seeds of work, seeds of love, right? Just seeds of just sharing the word of God. I love you all. Be blessed. Again, this is Freedom Sundays. My name is Ashley. And thank you for tapping in to Freedom Sundays with Royal Dominion Authority Global Ministries. You all, we going worldwide. We going worldwide. We spreading the word around the world. This is not about me, but it's about the building up of the kingdom of God. And we're taking the seed that God has placed in our hands, and we are distributing these seeds worldwide. No, we are not stingy with the seeds that God has given us, but we are giving these seeds out like never before. We are sharing in the word and in the love of God in good health, in abundance, in mercies. Because God's mercies for us are rich every morning, God. They are new every morning. And so, God, we thank you, God. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace, God. We thank you, God, for your kindness and your understanding. We thank you, God, for holding us in your arms, God. Even when we wanted to let go, even when we wanted to just crawl up, God, and hide up under a rock, God, when we just wanted to die, God, God, but you allowed us to live, God, and you spoke a life over us, Father God, that we will go forth, God, and pro proclaim, God, the good news of the gospel, God, God, which is life, God, so if you know somebody who's dead, <laughs> who's living, but they're still dead, speak life into them, encourage them, don't put them down, don't talk about them, don't say, See, I told you you was going to be just like such and such. No, we ain't doing that. We're encouraging one another. Especially when we know that someone needs encouragement, we are encouraging them. Even if we feel like they know too much or they've been encouraged all their life. Every time I look around, somebody's always loving on them and hugging on them and giving them a word. You continue to give them a word as well. Every word counts. Somebody put that in the um, comment. Every word counts. Continue to love on the people of God because we all need it. We all need that support. We all need that encouraging word. We all need 
those hugs. We all need those those kisses, right? We all need those encouraging words because I know that I do. And I'm not going to think myself more highly than I ought to think. I'm going to encourage the next person because there is, at the end of the day, you never know when you're going to need to be encouraged. Sometimes I sit in silence when I'm around people because people don't even understand what I'm going through. And if you don't have nothing to say at all, don't say anything because even you can kill yourself. Even you can kill the next person with the words that come out of your mouth. So when you're feeling discouraged and you don't have a good or genuine word to speak, don't speak nothing at all. Just wait till the voice of the Lord speak and you speak what the voice of the Lord is speaking. And that is how you encourage yourself. You encourage yourself by listening to the voice of the Lord, which is the Holy Spirit that gives life, that edifies, that builds up, that tears down strongholds, that plants seeds of kindness and fruitfulness in the name of jesus i don't know who who that was for um but listen i love you all it's been 31 minutes too long okay but i love you all with the love of god keep me in your prayers as i am also always praying for you in jesus name amen